knowing that their actions will probably lead to being shot down in the streets. Eventually, the shocking murder of drill rapper Julio Fulio has taken a new turn with the alleged revelations of the person who gave away his location, pulled the trigger, and the one who ordered the hit. The rule of the streets says snitching is the ultimate betrayal, and it appears Julio Fulio might have been betrayed by three main suspects who played different parts on the day of the brutal murder of the rapper. Who Betrayed Fulio the tragic events leading up to the death of rapper Julio Fulio began on what was supposed to be a day of celebration. Fulio had made a name for himself in the rap industry with his raw and unfiltered lyrics that resonated with many. On June 25, 2024, Fulio was celebrating his 26th birthday in Tampa, Florida. The day started with excitement and joy as Fulio shared his plans for the celebration with his over 1 million followers on social media. The excitement was palpable as he posted several times about the party he would be hosting on Saturday night. Fulio's Instagram was buzzing with activity. He invited his followers to join the celebration, instructing them to private message him for the address. The party, which was held at an Airbnb, was documented extensively on his social media. Videos and photos showed Fulio and his friends enjoying the night, surrounded by music, laughter, and the vibrant energy that comes with a birthday celebration. However, the festive atmosphere was abruptly interrupted. Hours after the party began, Fulio posted on Instagram that the partygoers had been kicked out of their Airbnb. The reasons behind this sudden eviction remain unclear, but it forced Fulio and his entourage to find a new location to continue the celebration. This decision would prove to be fateful. Seeking a new venue, Fulio and his friends moved to a Holiday Inn in Tampa. It was here in the early hours of Sunday morning that the unthinkable happened. According to reports from News 4 Jax, Fulio was ambushed in the hotel parking lot. The term ambush used by his attorney underscores the premeditated and targeted nature of the attack. Police responded to the scene and found that Fulio and three others had been shot. Fulio was pronounced dead at the scene, while the other three victims were rushed to the hospital for treatment. The details of their injuries and current conditions have not been disclosed, but the impact of the shooting was immediate and devastating. Fulio's attorney described the incident as a basically ambushed attack, highlighting the calculated manner in which it was carried out. This wasn't a random act of violence. It was a targeted hit on a young man who had already survived multiple attempts on his life. In April, Fulio had posted on social media about surviving several assassination attempts, a grim foreshadowing of the fate that would eventually befall him. The timeline of events painted a picture of a night that started with joy and celebration, but ended in tragedy. Fulio's decision to share his birthday plans on social media and invite fans to join him may have inadvertently exposed him to danger. The move from the Airbnb to the Holiday Inn, a decision made in the spur of the moment, placed him in a vulnerable position. The reaction to Fulio's death from his fans and peers has been one of shock and sorrow. Social media platforms were flooded with tributes and messages of condolence. However, there have also been speculations about who might have given Fulio's ops the inside information about his whereabouts, which ultimately led to the rapper being shot. So far, the internet has connected three people who might have had a hand in the murder of Fulio. One person who has been rumored is a Tampa promoter named Ari, who hosted the event where Fulio was last seen. Ari, the promoter, had brought Fulio out to her event in Tampa. Speculation arose because she posted videos and photos of Fulio at the party in real time while he was still there. This event was unplanned, as she had asked him to come last minute on her Instagram story, hinting at his agreement with a post saying, guess who I got to come, accompanied by a demon emoji. Questions have been raised about why Fulio would attend a party hosted by someone he likely just met on Instagram. Fans accused Ari of backdooring Fulio because she shared his location on social media. In response, Ari has been adamant that she had nothing to do with his death. She stated that she is receiving death threats and is fearful for her safety. Ari explained that Fulio came to her event, stayed for a while, and then left, and she had no idea where he went afterward. She emphasized that the vibes at the club were positive and that she had no involvement in any negative activities. At this point, I'm getting death threats. Um, I'm getting phone calls. I'm getting text messages. And I just got to let y'all know what it is. Like, I had nothing to do with Fulio's death. Fulio, me and Fulio was texting. He came to my event. Um, you know, he popped out. He was in a section. He had him a bottle. And then he dipped. Ari addressed the accusations directly, expressing disbelief that people thought she would intentionally post Fulio's location for malicious reasons. She noted that if she wanted to backdoor him, she could have simply texted the people who wanted to harm him rather than posting it publicly. Ari reiterated that she had only posted what Fulio approved and that the night had gone well without any issues. She asked people to stop spreading false rumors and stressed that she and her team had nothing to do with the tragic incident. 
incident. Meanwhile, the other person accused of probably having a hand in Fulio's murder is a close friend who goes by the name of Mizzle. Mizzle spent the entire day with Julio Fulio from the Airbnb to the after party. This close association suggests he was one of Fulio's trusted friends. However, the internet's investigation into Mizzle's background has revealed troubling connections. Mizzle is closely associated with an individual known as Backstreet. Their bond is so strong that they often wear matching outfits, a sign of a deep friendship. This is problematic because Backstreet and Fulio had well-known issues. Backstreet had previously threatened Fulio on Clubhouse, stating that when he killed one of Fulio's friends, he expected Fulio to post about it on Instagram. Furthermore, Backstreet is very close with another rapper, Youngin Ace, who also had conflicts with Fulio. The fact that Mizzle is friends with both Backstreet and people close to Youngin Ace raises suspicions about his loyalty and intentions. After the news of Fulio's death broke, Backstreet posted Beautiful Day on his Instagram story, followed by a new video from Youngin Ace that seemingly took shots at Fulio. This has led to widespread speculation that Mizzle might have betrayed Fulio by revealing his location or even pulling the trigger. If Mizzle did play a role in this, he faces severe consequences. The internet is already labeling him as a suspect, accusing him of setting up his own friend. With death threats already being sent, Mizzle has come out to deny having anything to do with Fulio's murder. If he is innocent, this situation is a tragic misunderstanding. However, if he is guilty, the evidence and public attention make it likely that justice will be served in the streets. In the meantime, Fulio's biggest ops rapper, Youngin Ace, remains the prime suspect behind the hit on Fulio, and his involvement appears to be more concrete than all the other accusations flying around because Youngin Ace himself said so. Just after the news of Fulio's death, Youngin Ace dropped the video to the song Do It, where he rapped, been through it. I don't even call him by his name, I call them Lil Do It, so let's do it. Just call the phone, say they got the low. I told them do it, do it. I ain't sparing shit. it's on site if we into it. Uh, despite not mentioning Fulio's name directly, it was evident who Youngin Ace was talking about. The timing of the video dropping, the speculation surrounding Youngin Ace's connection to the shooting, and the beef history between Fulio and Youngin Ace spoke louder than anything else. The feud that led to Fulio's death. The feud between KTA and TKA, represented by Youngin Ace and Julio Fulio respectively, is one of the most intense and tragic rivalries in the rap world. To understand the origins of this deadly conflict, we need to delve into the backgrounds of these two prominent figures and the initial events that sparked the feud. Youngin Ace, whose real name is Kenyatta Bullard, hails from Jacksonville, Florida. Growing up in a city known for its high crime rates and gang activity, Ace found solace in music. He began rapping at a young age, using his his lyrics to express the struggles and hardships he faced in his daily life. His raw talent and authentic storytelling quickly gained him a following, and he soon became a rising star in the rap scene. Representing ATK, which stands for Ace's Top Killers, Young Gene Ace's music often reflects the harsh realities of street life and the violence that comes with it. On the other side of the feud is Julio Fulio, born Charles Jones. Like Young Gene Ace, Fulio also grew up in Jacksonville and faced similar challenges. He turned to music as an outlet, using his lyrics to narrate his experiences and the environment environment he grew up in. Fulio's gritty and unfiltered style resonated with many, earning him a dedicated fan base. He represents KTA, which stands for Kill Them All, a faction known for its aggressive and confrontational stance. The origins of the feud between Young and Ace and Fulio can be traced back to 2017. What began as a misunderstanding quickly spiraled into a full-blown conflict that would engulf both artists and their respective crews, ATK and KTA Kill Them All. The initial spark that ignited the feud remains unclear, but it is why widely believed to have stemmed from a minor disagreement that escalated out of control. In 2017, Fulio's cousin Zion Brown was tragically murdered inside his home at 1 in the morning. The incident was a devastating blow to Fulio and his family. The man arrested for the crime, Deontra Thomas, was associated with Young and Ace, further fueling the animosity between the two camps. The murder of Fulio's cousin set off a chain reaction of violence and retribution. Both Young and Ace and Fulio began to see each other as enemies, and their respective crews, ATK and KTA, were drawn into the conflict. In June 2018, Young and Ace was gaining traction in Florida's music scene, but his rising fame was overshadowed by a horrific incident. While celebrating a birthday with his brother and two friends, they were ambushed in a drive-by shooting. The attack left Young and Ace critically injured, having been shot eight times and claimed the lives of his brother and two close friends. Ace was the sole survivor of the attack, and the incident left a lasting impact on him. Young and Ace believed that Fulio was somehow involved in the attack, although Fulio has consistently denied any involvement. The drive 
Dubai shooting marked a significant escalation in the feud, and it intensified the animosity between the two artists. Ace's loss and subsequent recovery fueled his desire for retaliation, and the cycle of violence continued. While recovering from his injuries, Young and Ace faced legal troubles as well. He was arrested for violating his probation by possessing a firearm, which led to him being placed under house arrest. Despite these setbacks, Ace continued to work on his music, using it as an outlet to express his pain and anger. He released two mixtapes during this period, further solidifying his place in the hip-hop scene. Fulio, on the other hand, wasted no time in mocking Ace's losses. He took to social media to post taunting messages, further inflaming the situation. The back and forth between the two artists played out publicly, drawing attention to their feud and the violence that surrounded it. In January 2019, the feud took another deadly turn, when a rapper by the name of Boskun was gunned down after leaving a gentleman's club. Boskun was the brother of Queso, Jungan Ace's right-hand man. The murder of Boskun was a significant blow to ATK, and it prompted a retaliatory response. Just one month later, in February 2019, a 16-year-old named Bibi Osama, who was friends with Fulio, was also killed. Fulio released a tribute track titled Bibi Story, which brought mainstream attention to him and the ongoing violence in Jacksonville. The song highlighted the intense rivalry between KTA and ATK and the toll it was taking on both sides. As the feud continued to escalate, both crews began to trade body for body, with each side seeking revenge for the losses they had suffered. Fulio himself was targeted in a shooting, where a bullet grazed his head. Although he survived, the violence extended to his girlfriend, who was also shot at. Fulio would go on to lose two more friends, Spaz2X and Rod K, in quick succession. In March 2019, Jungan Ace was the target of another shooting, this time at his hotel in Georgia. Once again, Ace survived the attack, but he lost another friend in the process. The shooters were identified as being from Jacksonville, indicating that the feud had followed Ace across state lines. The ongoing conflict between Young and Ace and Fulio had a profound impact on their respective crews, ATK and KTA. The violence and retaliatory actions created a cycle of retribution that seemed impossible to break. Both artists used their music to express their experiences and emotions, but the feud continued to overshadow their careers. Meanwhile, in 2022, it looked like Fulio and Youngin Ace would bury the hatchet after a long period of war when DJ Vlad interviewed them separately. After Fulio had opened up the doors for possible peace, could there be anything that could be done with, let's just say, you and Young and Ace sitting down together and saying, look, a lot of f happened on both ends, but we have to just basically, you know, we, we don't have to be friends, but we got to get past this and kind of just move on with our careers because we're both successful in our own way. It probably happened sooner than later. You never know what God got planned, you know? I told him that a couple times, you know? We talk, we be talking to her on the time, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, never know what, what could happen. Afterwards, DJ Vlad sat down with Jungin Ace to discuss their feud. In the interview, DJ Vlad spoke with Jungin Ace, marking the second time he engaged with him, following multiple interviews with other figures in the scene. His intention was not to escalate tensions between Jungin Ace and Julio Fulio, but to explore the possibility of reconciliation. Jungin Ace and DJ Vlad discussed the potential for ending the ongoing conflicts. Jungin Ace mentioned that he had never met Julio Fulio in person and doubted the authenticity of any past communications. He emphasized that many individuals in his city used diss tracks against him as a strategy to gain views and popularity. This, he explained, creates a false sense of beef with people he has never actually met. Despite the apparent animosity, Young Gein Ace acknowledged that some form of communication had occurred, although he downplayed its significance. He hinted at a willingness to talk and suggested that a resolution might be possible, albeit indirectly. When asked about the possibility of sitting down with Fulio to discuss their differences, differences, Youngin Ace didn't reject the idea outright. He noted that while significant losses had occurred on both sides, there might be room for negotiation and peace. Sadly, just two years on, Fulio has become one of the victims of the gang feud, which now seems to have picked off steam with the death of one of the pivotal figures in the game. The aftermath of Fulio's death, the news of Fulio's passing sent ripples through the music industry and his fan base. Within hours, social media platforms were flooded with tributes, condolences, and memories of the late rapper. However, what truly stood out was the unprecedented surge in his social media following and YouTube view. In just 24 hours, Fulio's Instagram account gained nearly 200,000 new followers, and his YouTube videos amassed millions of additional views. This phenomenon is both fascinating and perplexing, raising questions about the public's 
fascination with celebrities after their death. The news of XSX Tentation's death on June 18, 2018, sent shockwaves through the music community. As the world grappled with the loss of the young rapper, the immediate impact on his music streams was nothing short of extraordinary. On the day of his passing, on-demand streams of his music in the United States surged by an astonishing 549%. On June 17, Dex Tentation's catalog of songs collected 9.2 million streams. However, by June 18, that number had skyrocketed to 59.6 million streams. This dramatic increase highlighted the profound connection fans felt with his music and their need to revisit his work in the wake of his tragic death. Among the most streamed songs on that fateful day, Sad led the charge with 8.97 million streams, marking a 408% increase from 1.77 million streams the previous day. Jocelyn Flores saw a staggering 628% rise, reaching 4.46 million streams, up from 613,000. Moonlight experienced a 370% increase, with streams climbing to 4.23 million from 900,000. Changes also saw a significant boost, with streams rising by 462% to 4.04 million from 719,000. Lastly, Fuck Love, featuring Trippy Red, surged by 499%, reaching 3.83 million streams from 639,000. Also, on the day of his death, Juice World's on-demand audio streams skyrocketed by 487%, reaching over 38.2 million streams in the United States alone. This was nearly 24 million more than any other artist on that day. His music dominated the charts, with four of his songs making it into the top 10 across platforms like Spotify and Apple Music. Lucid Dreams, the track that catapulted Juice World into stardom, was the most streamed song of the day, garnering nearly 4.4 million on-demand audio streams. Legends, with its eerily prophetic lyrics, followed closely with 3.1 million streams. Other hits like Robbery and All Girls Are The Same also made it to the top 10, ranking 7th and 9th respectively. However, despite not having the same star power as XX or Juice World, plus controversies and feuds that often surrounded him, Fulio's talent was undeniable. His tracks like Crooks and List of Dead Ops garnered millions of views, making him a prominent figure in the rap community. His sudden passing left a void, but it also sparked a wave of interest in his life and work. Meanwhile, Youngin Ace has found himself the subject of online criticism after the release of the music video Do It after Fulio's death. Just hours after after the news of Fulio's death broke, Youngin Ace released the music video for his song Do It. The timing of this release was seen by many as a deliberate act of provocation, leading to a wave of online criticisms. Fans and critics accused Ace of celebrating Fulio's demise, further fueling the controversy. The release of Do It has brought the long-standing feud between Youngin Ace and Julio Fulio back into the spotlight. The history of violence, loss, and provocation between the two rappers has created a toxic environment that has spilled over into real-life consequences. As soon as as the video premiered, social media platforms were flooded with reactions. Fans and critics alike took to Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube to voice their opinions. The overwhelming sentiment was one of outrage and disbelief. Many accused Young Gene Ace of being insensitive and disrespectful, with some even suggesting that he was celebrating Fulio's death. One user commented, This is diabolical work, goddamn, highlighting the perceived moral transgression. However, Young Gene Ace is not the first rapper to face backlash for mocking a dead rival. On September 6, 2012, 18-year-old rapper Lil Jojo was tragically gunned down in a drive-by shooting. The incident sent shockwaves through Chicago, but it was the Twitter response from rapper Chief Keef, with whom Lil Jojo had beef, that ignited a firestorm of backlash. Keef's mocking tweet about Jojo's death drew widespread condemnation and raised serious questions about the culture of violence in the hip-hop community. Stay tuned as we unravel the events leading up to this tragedy and explore the aftermath that left an indelible mark on the music world. The murder of Lil Jojo and the subsequent reaction from Chief Keef. On September 6, 2012, 18-year-old rapper Lil Jojo was tragically gunned down in a drive-by shooting. The incident sent shockwaves through Chicago, but it was Chief Keef's response on Twitter that ignited a firestorm of backlash. Just a day after the murder, Chief Keef took to Twitter to post a series of tweets that would ignite a firestorm of backlash. In a tweet that has since become infamous, Keef wrote, It's sad cuz that Jojo wanted to be just like us. This callous and mocking response to Jojo's death drew immediate condemnation from fans, critics, and fellow artists alike. However, Youngin Ace and his gang members weren't paying too much to backlash because while Youngin Ace was mocking the death of Fulio with his brand new single, so was his fellow gang member and collaborator Spinabenz. Spinabenz, whose real name is Noah Williams, is a key figure in the ATK or Ace's Top Killers, a rival gang that has been embroiled in a bloody conflict with KTA for years. The rivalry between 
fighting KTA and ATK is not just about music. It's a war that has claimed lives and left a trail of devastation in its wake. Like with Young Gene Ace, Fulio and Spinner Benz's rivalry reached new heights with a series of diss tracks and social media exchanges that kept their fans on edge. Each new release seemed to escalate the tension, with both rappers refusing to back down and Spinner Benz gloating over Fulio's demise. Spinner Benz took to Instagram, posting a series of celebratory messages about Fulio's demise. His words, game over, we won, were not just a declaration of victory, but a blatant display of disrespect. The post quickly went viral, sparking outrage and disbelief across social media. The internet was ablaze with reactions to Spinner Benz's comments. Fans and critics alike took to platforms like X, formerly known as Twitter, to express their shock and anger. One user wrote, Spinner Benz and Wappa with the Choppa sampling Chingy Holiday in to diss Fulio. I can feel it. Another added, This is disgusting. R.I.P. Fulio. Spinner Benz needs to find Christ. The backlash was immediate and intense. Many condemned Spinner Benz for his insensitivity and lack of respect for the dead. Another ominously predicted, Spinner Benz and Jungin Ace talking shit about Fulio is crazy. One of them probably next to get caught slipping. Still, on the other side of the aisle, Fulio's girlfriend was mourning her beloved lover. Amidst his burgeoning career, Career, Julio found love in Blanco Mani, a talented hairstylist and entrepreneur from Jacksonville. Blanco, known for her impeccable braiding techniques and entrepreneurial spirit, owned the Hair X Wig Killer Beauty Salon and the Shop 1023 Boutique. Their relationship, though somewhat discreet, was filled with mutual affection and respect. Blanco often shared glimpses of their life together on social media, showcasing their deep bond. Blanco Mani was among the first to confirm the heartbreaking news. She took to Instagram to share her grief, posting a series of emotional messages messages and videos. The sudden surge in attention led her to privatize her account, but her sorrow was evident in every word she shared. Blanco's initial reaction to Julio's death was one of shock and disbelief. She took to Instagram to confirm the tragic news, sharing a series of posts that conveyed her heartbreak. Julio Fulio's untimely death at 26 leaves an indelible mark on the Florida rap scene and beyond. Sadly, with the death of Fulio, the violence that has dominated the Florida rap scene in the last years only looks to be getting escalated. For more content like this, click on the videos showing on your screen now.